Great. Uh, so hello, everyone. Um, so, thanks for coming. And uh, today, today's talk uh, is by Alex Kazda, who is currently a visiting professor in Boulder, Colorado. And he will talk about uh, some minion homomorphisms uh, and how they give reductions for promised values, constraint satisfaction problems. Thank you very much, Jakub. Uh, and good morning, uh, everybody. So uh, I'm going to be talking about that. So I'm not content with usual CSP. I want to talk about promise valued uh, CSP. So let's begin by uh, explaining what that is. So for my talk, uh, it will look like this. I've got a cost function uh, that's a sum of uh, some uh, parts and each part consists of some uh, something I call valued relation or I mean, not just me, but uh, that was called valued relation, uh, which would be some R like a prefabricated uh, cost function applied to some variables. So those V11, V12 and so on, they are just uh, symbols that stand for some variables. And then uh, I can multiply each of the uh, each of these uh, R's by little r, which is a, a positive uh, rational number. All numbers are rational because uh, we cannot represent all real numbers, so I'll just stick to rational ones. And I make a sum of them. Now uh, the the thing is, this is a promise problem. So actually, the, each of these R's can stand for one of two things. So for each R, each symbol R, I've got two functions uh, that go from either nth power of some set A or nth power of some set B to rational numbers, all, or also I, I allow uh, the infinite value, which basically means that some tuple of inputs uh, is uh, not feasible. And uh, I've got yes instances and no instances. So it's a promise problem. So sometimes an instance is neither yes or no. Uh, I guess the, if you've seen any talks about promise CSP, this, this should be a familiar thing. So the yes instances are uh, such that there exists some uh, sigma that assigns values from A to the variables uh, so that when I uh, evaluate the cost function in A in here, then the value is at most Q. Actually, I think I may have forgotten to tell you about uh, the, the, the Q as part of the input. So that's a threshold value, uh, which uh, I mean, you can just imagine it to be zero. It doesn't really uh, affect things uh, too much. And then I've got no instances where it's so that uh, whenever whatever value assignment I choose, so whatever values I give to variables in B, uh, I will never uh, be below a Q. Now, for this to be reasonable, I need A and B to be some specific uh, structures. So I need that there exists some homomorphism from A to B so that I cannot have an instance that's both yes instance and a no instance. It should be so that when there is a cheap solution in A, then there is a cheap solution uh, in B in a kind of automatic uh, fashion. And uh, I, I'm not, not putting this on the slide because it would be, I think, too much definitions. But A and B need to be somewhat reasonable to, uh, to make this problem work. So one way to make this reasonable is to choose A and B to be this, exactly the same uh, things. So, so then it's valued CSP in the decision version. So uh, maybe your favorite view of valued CSP is uh, search version, where you want to actually find a satisfying assignment. Uh, so I'm, I'm just going to do it uh, in this uh, decision uh, version because then it's easier to uh, reduce uh, yes-no problems. But the search version is, uh, is not really very far away. Now, uh, PVCSPAB will be the situation where I fixed the, the domains A and B and the cost functions. So each domain together with cost functions, uh, I will sometimes call it valued relational uh, structure. So that's A and, and B. And it's a similar situation to CSP of uh, A or PCSP of A. So I want to uh, know how difficult to solve this is and everything will be finite uh, for, for this talk. Uh, although I'm sure that uh, something can be generalized. I will stick to just uh, finite stuff. 
Okay, so in study of uh, CSP, uh, you, uh, you've probably uh, heard about the algebraic approach or know a lot about the algebraic approach, where uh, it means studying operations that are compatible with uh, relations uh, on, on the structure. So what are weighted operations? So I'm going to use my version of them, uh, which, however, is not uh, that different from uh, what other people have been doing. I'm definitely not, not the first one to talk about weighted uh, operations. So uh, what's a weighted operation for me? It will be a weighted uh, sum like this. So I've put some weights on the inputs. So I, I do this by giving weights to projections. So that's, that's the FI. Fi is uh, some non-negative uh, number uh, there for each projection. And then the interesting stuff begins here on the right-hand side of the arrow, which is just a delimiter that uh, like, tells me, okay, this is, this is where we go. And uh, here are weights given to operations. So the G and H and so on, these are honest operations that go from nth power of A uh, to B. And uh, the, the condition is that uh, weights are non-negative because that would be strange if they were not. Uh, and uh, I want the sum of the weights on the inputs and the outputs to be the same. So you can think of this as somehow uh, looselessly transforming the, the inputs uh, into the outputs uh, according to some recipe. Uh, this may be a little bit strange. Uh, so this is probably the most general view of weighted operations. Uh, so here is an example, which is actually not very strange, and probably uh, you've heard of of this example, which is submodularity. And in my view of the world, submodularity uh, is weighted operation from the second power of zero one to zero one, and uh, the uh, coefficients everywhere, the weights everywhere, are just one. So it takes first projection and second projection, and it outputs a formal sum of uh, bitwise and and bitwise or, where everything's got the, the same weight, uh, let's say one. Now, as I said, I'm not the first one to uh, do this. So uh, the, the first paper that I know about that's uh, using this for CSP is from 2013. It's uh, David A. Cohen, Martin C. Cooper, uh, Paddy Creed, uh, Peter Jevons, and uh, Stan, Stan Bajivny. Uh, so uh, I don't think that the, uh, this is exactly the way they would like it uh, in that paper, but but uh, it's it's basically the, the same thing. And they, they use them already as polymorphisms. So what are polymorphisms? Well, poly polymorphisms should be operations that respect uh, relations. So uh, here is a, a reminder of what operations are. And weighted polymorphisms should work on these weighted relational structures, so some universe and some, uh, some uh, weighted relations. And the compatibility condition uh, should be something uh, like this. So for each n, the NRE weighted polymorphism consists of those weighted operations that uh, map uh, tuples in a, in a given relation to something that costs at most as much as the inputs. So the, the weighted polymorphisms don't increase the cost. You can see on the left-hand side, that's like the cost of the projections. It corresponds to this left-hand side. And on the right-hand side of the, of the inequality symbol, I've got the costs of the, of the outputs. So, so uh, basically, I'm taking the formal sum and kind of applying it to the, uh, to the inputs and the, and the outputs. And again, you've, if you looked into VCSP, you may have seen this maybe in a slightly different form, but, uh, but it's not, uh, it, it's not any, anything very new. So for some modularity, things become quite nice. Some a that's probably how you would see some modularity in the CS paper. So a relation is submodular if when I take uh, any two tuples in the relation, uh, some C1 and C2, uh, then their cost is at most the cost of the sums of the bitwise and of the two tuples together with the cost of the bitwise or of the two tuples. Now, sneakily, I'm changing A to B on the, you can see when, when I go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, uh, but that's not really a big uh, difference uh, conceptually. Of course, uh, it, it means uh, that I cannot compose, for example, but uh, otherwise not much is going on. And the set of all weighted polymorphisms, so when N goes from one to infinity, that's the weighted polymorphism uh, minion. Uh, so, 
Now, what's this talk about? It should, it's basically about me trying to be like the, the, the cool kids. So Barto, Boulin, Oppershell, and Krokin uh, wrote a paper about how homomorphisms of polymorphisms give uh, gadget uh, reductions. So when you've got uh, minion homomorphisms of CSP polymorphism uh, clones, uh, sorry, minions, not clones, uh, you get uh, some uh, very natural reductions between uh, PCSPs. And uh, I would like to know if we can do this for a promise uh, valued CSP, uh, where instead of uh, polymorphisms, we've got weighted polymorphisms. And th this talk is about how we can do it. Uh, but uh, first, I need to answer the question, uh, what's even uh, a reasonable way to, uh, to define uh, these homomorphisms? So, so, so I've got these weighted polymorphism uh, minions. Uh, but uh, what, what are the right homomorphisms? So again, just a reminder of what, what I'm talking about here, uh, what, what the operations are. So those would be some uh, so weighted polymorphisms are some operations uh, like this. So uh, I'm going to denote by W Paul plus uh, the support uh, set uh, in the sense that those are the NRE operations for which I can find some operation among the weighted polymorphisms uh, where uh, the, the F has a positive weight. So F is a normal operation, like the everyday operation. Uh, and uh, sometimes these operations have a positive weight in, in some weighted polymorphism. And if that happens, I toss these operations into uh, the, uh, this uh, support set. Uh, and uh, the support set uh, is actually a minion, which means it's closed undertaking miners. Uh, so if I take all of, the, all of these W pole uh, plus uh, with, for all RTs, it's, uh, I will need it to, to, to choose A and B so that it's non empty. It's actually not like a fact of the universe for all A, a and B. But for reasonable A's and B's, uh, this will be non-empty. As long as I've got some weighted operations, uh, this will be uh, non-empty. And I want it to be closed under taking minors. And that's a fact of the universe. So, so uh, if uh, uh, some F belongs into the support set, then its minor will belong into the support set. A minor is what happens when I take an operation and I start uh, messing around with the variables. So uh, there is some mapping sigma that uh, uh, takes uh, that goes from one two three four to n to one two three four to k, and it assigns uh, new indices to uh, to axes uh, like this. So I'm not going to be talking about minors too much about in this talk, but uh, they'll, they'll make an appearance. So support minion is closed under taking minors. Uh, that's uh, some exercise that basically follows from uh, these weighted polymorphisms being closed under uh, taking minors. So which, uh, again, it's, it's, it's not uh, very difficult or deep. So homomorphisms. Well, I take some minion homomorphism uh, with, on these support sets from uh, weighted polymorphisms AB to weighted polymorphisms of CD. And uh, what am I? What I so what? What's a homomorphism here? Well, I wanted to commute with minor taking. So uh, when I take minor, it shouldn't matter whether I take it inside the homomorphism or I do the homomorphism first and then I uh, I you know, take the minor. And uh, minion, weighted minion homomorphism is uh, such a, a mapping on the support set uh, th that respects uh, the weighted operations. So whenever uh, this big thing is uh, a weighted polymorphism from A to B, then when I take phi and I apply it on the right-hand side, so you can see on the right-hand side here, this red thing, that's the only change in the formula, in the big formula. I want this, this new formula to lie in the weighted polymorphisms from C to D. So, so that uh, if, if I do this, and it always happens like this, then I say that phi uh, is uh, giving me a weighted minion homomorphism. Now, uh, I'm actually lying to you a little bit in the sense that I simplify things uh, to get uh, the full power uh, of, of the theorem. Uh, we can actually make it more general. And instead of taking one phi, we can take the probability distribution 
over uh, the some different files so i can take some uh, some linear combinations uh, in here but i think that's too much uh, to 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 try to explain because then i would have one more sum in here and everything would be uh, even worse when it comes to complexity of, of, the, of these formulas so for this talk let's just say that that it works like this but uh, it could be made a little bit more more powerful Okay, so I want to do reductions and I'll do reductions through an intermediate problem. Uh, this is again uh, inspired by the methods from the uh, Boolean Barto uh, Opper Shell Crockin uh, paper. And my intermediate problem is something called valued promise minor condition problem with the lovely acronym uh, PVMC. Uh, it's got parameters N, A, and B. So n is just some number, and I'm not going to talk too much about n, but basically for the reduction to work, n needs to be some big but constant number for the given structures. A and b are uh, these uh, valued relational structures. And the problem looks like this. It's, got, it's, it's a little bit uh, complicated. Uh, it's got lots of inputs. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it's all pieces that are needed. So I've got again a threshold Q. That's uh, the uh, kind of same thing, thing as uh, for CSP. Then I've got a finite set of minor conditions. What are those? Well, I'm formally not going to define them. I'm going to give you an example in the next slide. Uh, but uh, they are identities of the form uh, some operation equals some other operation where I'm also allowed to take minors of these operations. So really it's minor of one operation equals minor of another uh, operation. And uh, these operations will have operation symbols uh, uh, F1 to Fn. So those are just symbols. And uh, to I need I'm basically solving an equation uh, functional equation here. So I uh, these operation symbols will need to be realized by um, projections or by some uh, operations from this support set. Uh, so uh, for that's that's coming in a moment. But uh, it's also a valued problem. So there'll be uh, valued maps alpha i and beta i for each fi. I'm going to have a, a valued a pair of valued maps that give me the costs of, uh, of choosing uh, each operation to be something like that. And because it's a promise problem, I've got uh, two for each operation. So there'll be one for the no instances and one for the yes instances. Uh, each FI has some arity. Uh, the big N has only one, uh, one role in here, which is it's an upper bound on the arities that, that can show up in this problem. Uh, so I cannot make uh, uh, any arities at all I want. I, I can just choose arities at, mo at most N, which makes this problem uh, not uh, explode uh, in, in, in some crazy way. And finally, there is uh, probably the uh, most technical part, which is each uh, alpha i and beta i, each pair of these costs needs to be compatible with weighted polymorphisms, which uh, I, I think if it's like you, if your situation is like me, you, me which is it's in more early morning and uh, uh, it's kind of overwhelming all of this stuff, maybe this is the thing that could be ignored the most. So, so alpha eyes and beta eyes can have some properties, but uh, it's not really uh, that uh, that important on the first pass uh, what, what what they are. But it's basically like uh, relations being compatible with operations kind of situation. So what are the uh, possibilities here? Well, I can have uh, yes and no instances. A yes instance is uh, an instance where I can solve uh, the uh, minor condition in projections, and I can do so cheaply. So cheaply means uh, my cost is at most Q, and the cost for the yes instances is given by the alphas. And alphas are each uh, telling me how much a given projection costs. So, so uh, I'm, I've got Xi, which assigns to each Fi uh, some projection, the Xi i projection. And I need to satisfy this uh, system of identities, uh, sigma, and I need to do so uh, so that the costs are at most Q. So that's, uh, that's yes instances. No instances are such that whenever I try to do this in the support minion, instead of projections, 
uh, I will actually not manage to both satisfy Sigma and make it uh, to be cheap. So at most Q, but notice here I'm using beta eyes. So I switched from, uh, from alpha eyes to the other, uh, to the other costs. So here, uh, beta i needs to assign value uh, in or, or cost uh, to each uh, member of the uh, of the weight uh, of the support minion of the of the weighted polymorphisms. So I've got yes instances. I've got no instances. Uh, it's uh, not obvious, but it turns out that uh, uh, if I've got this compatibility going on, then I cannot have a yes and no instance at the same time. So compatibility is 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 this like uh, uh, I mean imagine alpha and beta are relations and then compatibility is basically uh, that. So uh, compatibility keeps alphas and betas uh, honest and uh, somehow not 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 uh, uh, crazy. So uh, I will say that a pair of uh, these costs alpha and beta is compatible with uh, weighted polymorphism uh, minion A B. If whenever I've got an array uh, weighted polymorphism, uh, alpha and beta are both, they have some RIT. I'm kind of hiding this from you, but they've got some RIT N. Whenever I've got an array weighted polymorphism F, then the costs of the projection uh, projections weighted by the by the by the weights from F are at most the costs of the of the outputs weighted uh, by the uh, again outputs of F. So, uh, I mean, it's a lot of letters, but uh, but it, uh, I think this is pretty natural as, as a choice for compatibility. It follows the pattern for for relations, for example. So, where uh, where are these betas? And uh, so, alphas are defined. Uh, alpha is a map uh, from projections, right? Yeah, from projections to rational numbers, I don't allow infinity in here. So it's just uh, reasonable things, rational numbers. And, and betas go, to... betas go from an uh, part of the support minion uh, to again rational numbers. Okay. So, and alpha each alpha i goes from just projections like uh, uh, projections with n inputs. So 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 they they both have the, the uh, like matching array. So uh, if you oh, yeah, if so you they are actually all. They're specific to your function symbols and they have the same array as those function symbols. Yeah, yeah. So there is one alpha i, beta i for each function, and each function in the input has some array, and the arrays match. Um, so so uh, that's that's how it is. And actually, my input is kind of big because uh, I what I need is that uh, as a part of the inputs, I'm getting these alpha i's and beta i's. And I'm giving them by I'm getting them as tables. So for projections, that not that's not so bad. But actually, the table for beta i uh, will be uh, kind of big. But since I've got this big n as my as my upper bound on the on the RITs, uh, this will not be uh, not be a problem for some asymptotic complexity. But but beta i is a pretty big object uh, actually. So this is probably not a problem you want to solve in your everyday life, but it will be useful as intermediate step in the in the reductions. Allow me one more question, just uh, so that uh, just to make sure I understand. So this small n uh, in the definition of compatibility has nothing to do with the other small n's. Right? Ouch! Ouch! That's that's a great uh, sure. great question. Catching catching something that's wrong. Uh, yeah, excuse me. This is these are different small n's. Yeah. So I see one small n here, which is always the same. Up until the compatibility, where I uh, was not very nice, uh, and uh, this this last this this small n here in the uh, in the compatibility part, uh, it probably should be something like m, or uh, I just didn't notice. I, I already used this uh, this in uh, this uh, number, so uh, that's Thanks. my fault. Yeah. So so this n doesn't have. It's not. Uh, it's not uh, this this one. So and for compatibility, I'm just thinking about one one pair. I'm taking this one pair alpha and beta at a time. So so there is no interaction uh, with with anything else when I check compatibility. Okay, so here is an example. Uh, hopefully, this will make it a little bit uh, more uh, understandable. I pick uh, relational structures on zero one, 
And uh, let's say that I've got an instance where I've got F1 and F2 that are both binary and sigma will be the system of these identities. So here is an example of a minor condition, which if you look at it, uh, basically what it says is that uh, F1 is uh, symmetric and uh, by the same token, F2 needs to be symmetric. So that's, that's the system. Uh, I just picked it at random to choose something kind of reasonably small. Now the costs will be uh, as follows. Alpha one will give weight, uh, will give cost one uh, to any projection and beta will uh, just uh, calculate the values of the operation on the input zero one and one zero and sum them up in, uh, let's say, integers. So here it's not modulo, uh, modulo two, here it's uh, in a normal way. So that's, that's some way to assign this cost. Of course, there are many others, but let's say I'll pick this one. And for simplicity, let's just say that alpha two, beta two are constant zeros so that they get out of the way. Now, can this be a yes instance? Turns out no, because in order to be a yes instance, I would need to satisfy the system uh, sigma in projections. And there is no projection uh, that would uh, be symmetric. That's kind of uh, uh, a very easy exercise that no projection will satisfy uh, x, y equals y, x. So whatever projection you pick, uh, this will not work. So it's never a yes instance, which means algorithmically we are always safe saying no uh, to this. Uh, but uh, that doesn't answer the question whether this is an official uh, no instance. And uh, there the answer is it depends. And uh, for, uh, in the, for the, in, with the idea of explaining this problem a little bit better, I'm going to look at the no instance uh, situation. So to not be a no instance, there needs to exist some cheap solution in the weighted polymorphism minion. So there need to exist F1 and F2 that are both symmetric. They live in the binary part of the weighted polymorphism minion. And uh, their uh, cost measured by beta, which, is, uh, which was defined, remember, by summing up the, the values at 0, 1, and 1, 0, is at most Q, which Q was 1. So, so the uh, this sum is at most 1. So really what we want is commutative F1 in the weighted polymorphism minion that uh, where, where 0, 1 costs at most 1. Why just zero one? Because F1 is commutative. So, so actually this is kind of simplifying itself. And uh, because we are operating, we are going from zero one to zero one. Uh, that means that F on zero one and one zero needs to return the value zero. So this happens if and only if the binary part of the weighted polymorphism minion uh, contains uh, either a, a bitwise and nor X nor or constant zero. So basically, uh, those those would be those uh, binary Boolean operations that return zero on uh, on different inputs. So I mean, you can draw the table, and there are four of them, and uh, that's that's which operations those are. Now, to save time, I didn't go into details about this compatibility, but uh, uh, A and B. Uh, are also restricting the the uh, the possible betas. So the the beta I picked here uh, is not possible uh, as as part of the input always, but only when A and B have some specific uh, properties. Uh, but I'm I'm just kind of hand waving it away because I want to uh, finish the talk uh, in, in some reasonable time. But uh, there is a little bit more to the uh, to the example. Okay, so now what's the, the what's my approach? I want to do reductions from one PCSP to another. I'm assuming I've got the weighted polymorphism, uh, weighted polymorphism minion homomorphism, and some phi, and uh, I want to imitate the uh, boolean barto oppershell crockin paper by going through an intermediate problem. Uh, and reducing PCSPs first to this intermediate problem uh, and then getting a pretty straightforward reduction between these intermediate problems and then going back. So I've got three arrows in total in here. I assume that I've got homomorphism from AB to CD. The reductions go the other way, which is kind of normal in, in this situation. So I start in PVCSP CD. 
I want to reduce it to this uh, promise valued minor condition problem uh, where I am talking about CD and I pick N to be something big. So uh, just uh, something like uh, uh, I need to uh, have basically the, uh, the the size of A to to some to some power of of the arity of the largest relation, something like that. Uh, so so N is a, some but that is a constant, some big constant, and I want this reduction. Then I've got this red arrow in the middle, which is the easiest reduction of them all between these promised valued minor condition problems. I designed these problems so that the reduction is, is, is very easy, basically. And then I need to reduce back to PVCSP, but notice that I now I switched CD for AB. So I want promise valued minor condition problem to reduce to PVCSP of, of AB. And uh, I will talk about all of these arrows, but uh, actually only the red arrow will be uh, done in uh, reasonable detail. So uh, how is the reduction in the red arrow going? Basically, I'm doing almost nothing. I just need to uh, do a one composition with phi in there, and, uh, and that's it. So it will be pretty easy. What's uh, not so easy uh, is the equivalence of PVCSP and uh, PVMC. Uh, for re reasonably big big N, um, and I'll talk a little bit about that one too. Okay, so first the red arrow, the, the part where things are kind of beautiful and natural. So I've got this minion homomorphism uh, for of valued uh, weighted minions, and how does the reduction work? Well, I'm going to keep almost everything. Uh, so somebody gives me an instance of uh, PVMC CD, which is this big thing with sigma, Q, alphas, and betas. And I do nothing uh, when it comes to sigma, Q, and the alpha i's. I just uh, copy and paste them in my new problem. And then I change betas. So I'll have beta prime i, which will be, oh, I'm missing an index in here. So this is meant to be beta i. Uh, in, in, in there, uh, which is beta i composed with, uh, with phi. So let's make a, a quick check that this makes sense. So my goal is to get an instance of PVMC uh, AB. So if now I get uh, some uh, operation from A, uh, from A to B, uh, how do I give it the beta prime cost? Well, I first map it uh, into an operation in the support minion of uh, weighted polymorphism clone minion, weighted polymorphism minion from C to D, and then I apply beta i, and uh, that works. So at least it's it's uh, reasonably uh, well defined. Now I'm just going to sweep compatibility under the rug, but uh, it turns out that uh, this uh, this this uh, alpha i beta i primes will be compatible with uh, with the weighted polymorphisms. Uh, just I don't want to get into too many inequalities. So uh, now, uh, if you want, it's it's not so it's not so hard to verify it in a kind of uh, straightforward way. Uh, but how is it with the instances? So to get a reduction, I need yes instances to go to yes instances and no instances to go to no instances. Well, yes instances will go to yes instances in a kind of boring way because yes instances are all about projections. And I didn't do anything about uh, the projections uh, and didn't do anything about sigma and I didn't do anything about the costs of projections. So yes instances go to yes instances uh, in, in kind of uh, a straightforward way. How is it with no instances? So suppose some, I've got a no instance of PVMC uh, CD. Uh, does this go to a no, no instance of PVMC AB? Uh, yes, um, because, well, let's assume for a contradiction, this does not happen. So suppose uh, I somehow produced uh, an instance of PVMC AB where uh, I can find a cheap solution in the weighted polymorphism, uh, sub, in the support set of the weighted polymorphism uh, minion of uh, A uh, to B. So suppose I can find some psi that assigns to F, the Fs uh, some, something from the support minion uh, that satisfies sigma, and the costs are at most Q, these beta prime costs. 
well, uh, then I look at what beta prime is. Beta prime was obtained by this composition. So this means that uh, the costs uh, are uh, like this. The costs are uh, beta, beta i applied to sigma, applied to whatever f gets assigned. Uh, and you sum this up and you get at most q. Now, uh, oh, OK. I. I see I've got a typo on my slide, so actually this this there should be, there is a missing phi uh, in here. So because uh, this is uh, I guess a little bit confusing. Let me let me do a uh, let me do a hot fix uh, in in there, and uh, let me let me add the uh, the right solution here. I forgot to write phi in here. Okay, it's compiling now, and uh, uh, the phi you are imagining here will come in a, in a moment. And I claim that this is a, this is a, 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 this is a witness that actually the instance I was given originally is not a no instance. Why? Well, because phi is a minion homomorphism, uh, it will map uh, something that satisfies sigma to something that satisfies sigma. Here is where I'm using that phi uh, is a minion homomorphism. And the costs are basically written here. This, this tells me that the costs in the betas of this solution are at most q. So, so uh, this shows that actually it was not a no instance uh, initially. OK. Um, maybe this is a good time to ask if there are any questions or people uh, needed, needing me to clarify something. Because this was the nice part uh, of the reductions. Doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, so this is, uh, you can see a cause of uh, uh, the uh, Boolean uh, Barta or Shell Crockin paper in this. It's, it's like uh, I slept on a lot of cost functions uh, on, on, on their paper and uh, kind of arranged things so that, uh, that uh, things uh, work. Okay, now I've got two more reductions to do, and uh, I'm going to do them, uh, well, one by example and one by hand waving because uh, time is uh, uh, short. So uh, one by example is a reduction from uh, PVCSP to this promise valued minor condition. So uh, uh, again, idea is from, from the, the, the Boolean Barto Opershell Crockin paper. And my example will be on uh, some pair CD where the universe of C is just zero one to keep things uh, reasonably uh, small. And uh, let's say that this is the input uh, instance. Uh, actually, most of these numbers are kind of useless. We will not use them for much of anything. Uh, but uh, let, let's say this is the, uh, the input uh, instance. And uh, what I need to do is to enumerate support sets of these relations. Actually, I, uh, the, two slides back, I said that the, the n here will, uh, was supposed to, to be as big as, uh, the, uh, as a to, to some largest arity of a. Actually, that was wrong. It's supposed to be um, c, uh, the size of the universe c, to the largest arity of, uh, of, of a relation here. So different thing. But uh, basically, n will be the, uh, the size of the support set of the largest uh, relation uh, in here. So let's say for the sake of the example that RC is less than infinity for exactly these uh, inputs, for these, for these pairs, and otherwise RC will be infinity on 0, 0. That for me, this, that, uh, the, I would say that support set of RC are these three uh, pairs. So something is in the support set if its cost is uh, uh, less than infinity. So it makes it like a feasible uh, part of a feasible solution of feasible tuple. And uh, let's say for the sake of the example that S is uh, less than infinity at zero and it's uh, infinity at one. So how am I going to create uh, this uh, minor uh, condition problem? Well, I'm going to create this set sigma of identities. Uh, I am going to uh, take a, an operation symbol for each variable. So I've got two variables in my input. So there is x and y, and uh, on uh, and a symbol of, of for each relation in my uh, so for each summoned in this uh, cost function. For so I've got fr here, and I've got fs uh, here. So those will be my uh, my operations, 
and then I'm going to uh, create these identities, which are always of the form variable operation equals uh, relation operation, and uh, they encode the, uh, the, the the feasible sets. They encode the support uh, support sets. Uh, basically, so that's that's what's uh, going on in here. Uh, for example, here is the uh, let's begin maybe at the last line. The last line says that uh, y needs to be something in in s. So uh, the possible the arities of the of the variables correspond to how many possible values these variables can take. So for each variable, I've got zero or one, so they are binary. And for fs. I only know that I know that fs can only be zero in a, in a kind of finite cost situation. So I put fy x zero x one has to be fs x zero, and uh, this can be then generalized to make it so that fr is actually ternary, so that corresponds to each of these uh, feasible these uh, feasible pairs. And uh, fr, you see the, the here the, I'm repeating this pattern. So I've got fr x1 x1, fr x1 x0, fr x0 x1. That's exactly the uh, the pairs in here, except I'm reading them then as lines, and those are the minors of of f that I've got here. And then I've got fx and fy in here. Why? Because here I've got x and y. So if you heard any talks about the, the PCSP uh, paper, uh, then uh, this should be familiar because this, this, is, this is exactly uh, their construction, exactly the same uh, trick. And uh, uh, what this enforces is that if I'm doing this, um, if I'm solving this in projections, I will need to be uh, feasible in the sense that I'm, I'll need to have finite cost. So maybe the cost will be over 42, but at least it will not be infinity. And you can see this because uh, how, how do you solve this in projections? Well, fs is x0, fy needs to be then the first projection because uh, that's the only way to make the, to satisfy the last identity in projections. Now, this propagates upwards. So fy uh, is x0 in the second line. What does it mean? Well, then fr needs to be uh, x zero. It needs to be x zero when it's when I take this minion. So it really needs to be the second the projection to the second coordinate, and uh, that finally propagates uh, to the first line. So fx needs to be the the second projection, and uh, so we see that there is only one uh, feasible solution actually to to what I set up in here. It doesn't really. I don't know what the cost will be, but at least it will be finite. Uh, so that's sending y to zero because of the constraint s, and then uh, sending x to the only other thing where like this matches with zero, which is one. So it's it, what I did here is like a, a consistency checking in a, in a really small small case, but it demonstrates hopefully how these things interplay. So uh, this this is what enforces finite costs. And then for uh, the uh, to to make sure that the costs are actually uh, as in the CSP, what am I going to do? Is I'm going to uh, do uh, uh, I'm going to uh, change the uh, the alphas and uh, betas. I'm going to set them up so that the uh, the costs work. But now in the gray part of the of the slides. I just realized I've got a bit of a, a typo. So alpha uh, alpha i uh, should correspond the cost of the ith uh, tuple, uh, which uh, is uh, uh, like you you look at how you uh, how you where you send x and y, and you can send them to one of those three things. So uh, I've got uh, three possibilities here, and to each I'm going to associate a cost. Uh, so uh, the uh, the cost uh, will be, for example, if if I if I'm taking the second projection, so that means I'm taking the uh, the second uh, uh, the second uh, of these two of these three choices, then alpha uh, r of the second projection should be the cost in C of one two. Except I got a typo there. It should be two times the 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 two is this two inherited from the from the instance. So that's where the numbers will show up. And 
alpha r1 will be the cost of the tuple 1, 1, and so on. Now the betas, they are kind of uh, more exciting. The betas uh, give me the costs when I map everything to D. So when I try to solve this instance in, uh, in, uh, in D, uh, and uh, so it will be RD uh, cost of the homomorphism uh, that, uh, that sends uh, these things somewhere. So this is applied, you apply H to each line. This is like a short, short for, uh, for that. And similarly, I'll do it for alpha s, beta s. That's where I would use this funky number 57 over 3. So that's where it would, it would appear. And uh, for the variables, I'm just going to have zero costs. So actually, I don't need alphas and betas in there uh, at all. So uh, variables, uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, non, non, I don't really need anything. And uh, it's an exercise to show that this will be compatible with weighted polymorphisms. Because I'm defining alphas and betas by relations, uh, it's, it's just some uh, straightforward uh, verification that this will be compatible. And uh, so uh, what do we have? Well, cheap solution of the PVCSP uh, in, uh, in C will correspond to a cheap solution in projections. Uh, that's uh, sort of the, uh, like the previous slide together with these costs. Uh, so uh, so that's, uh, that's how it will happen. While on the other hand, if I've got no cheap solution in, uh, of PVCSP in D, then there is no cheap solution of the uh, promise minor condition problem. Uh, the argument is basically like two slides back. So I'm going by contradiction. I'm assuming there is a cheap solution of the PVC, uh, PVMC problem, but then I will have some way to make these betas uh, be uh, of low cost. And I use these betas to actually map things into D uh, by basically using this, uh, the values of, this, uh, of these operations. And uh, so I'll find that actually there was a cheap solution of PV uh, CSP. Okay, I'm running a bit uh, low on time, but I'm also running out of slides. So that's, uh, that's going to work. Uh, so I'm going to sweep a lot of things under the rug for, the, uh, for the, the, uh, the final reduction. So I need to reduce PVMC to PV CSP. So I need to somehow find the PV CSP instance uh, that, uh, that encodes PVMC. This thing will work for any, uh, any n. So previously, we had to choose some big n. Here, n can be anything you want. It's easier for small n's, actually. Uh, and uh, the input consists of a bunch of alphas, alpha i's, beta i's, together with some uh, system of identities and q and so on. And uh, here, we need to show that we can simulate uh, alpha i and uh, beta i uh, somehow using a PVCSP instance. So somehow we need a pair of relations for each alpha i and beta i. And uh, what's happening here is that I will use Farkash lemma uh, to show that this is actually possible. Uh, but there are lots of fiddly things in here. So for one fiddly thing is that uh, the uh, relations can, be in, can have infinite values. So I need to be careful about infinite values. Uh, without infinite values, this would be basically just use Farkash lemma and everything will work out. It's infinite values uh, of relations, so infeasible pair tuples. I will need to be a bit careful, but uh, it's possible uh, to, to do this simulation and uh, it will work just like what we expect. So again, we want that PVMC in solvable in projections will give me a cheap solution of PVCSP in A. And if there is no cheap uh, solution in B, then there is no cheap solution in the weighted uh, polymorphisms. So here I didn't really tell you much, just told you what to believe, but, uh, but uh, uh, it, it, it can be done. And that's it. So thank you uh, for your attention. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Okay, so we've got about eight-ish minutes for questions. We have time so for questions. Are there any questions? Can I have a question, Alex? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Here. So in the BBKO, uh, when they do the reduction from the minor to PCSP, this is the old-fashioned indicator problem construction, right? Do I remember it correctly? The, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, 
So Wait, which one? Which one are you talking? Uh, one of them is just like the indicator. I, yeah, the, I, 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 mean, I, I think, think it's this one, right? It's, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. That's what I think. So uh -huh. did you then did you then try to adapt the construction we have in the whatever it's called the paper you mentioned at the beginning of the talk where we uh, I think we call it like weighted indicator problem or something sort of the natural generalization of the indicator construction to to weighted to the weighted setting so did you try to do some something similar here since you mentioned Parker's lemma uh, yeah so I'm definitely getting inspired by, by 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 these papers so maybe I should actually go back to the 2013 paper and uh, and uh, uh, look at whether I can just take take everything from you because the thing about this uh, paper as you've uh, noted noted at the beginning it's it's always in development and i've changed things around several times so hoping to get something as nice as possible uh, so uh, okay. i'm actually i was trying mostly i was reading your later paper about uh, i think it's uh, it was with uh, uh, with uh, tupper uh, about uh, the galois connection and trying to to make it work from there but uh, but maybe i should actually go back to the roots and look at the 2013 uh, actually paper. you shouldn't i think that paper is not written very well but i think libor had a student an msc student a couple of years ago and his uh, um, master dissertation has a nice exposition of these things. I think he got things uh, uh, nicely uh, nicely explained. So maybe that's a good source. I don't remember his name, Libor, Libor might. I think it's it's explained then in, uh, in a nice way. Well, it's, um, it's Jan Van Schura, but uh, I, I think, you know, this this is the top presentation what Alex says, so I wouldn't go back. <laughs> <laughs> you mean without all the details? <laughs> Well, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, I couldn't just uh, make this into a paper. So, so. Uh, the, well, what um, I mean is the concept is just the concepts are now seems just just right. So. I hope so. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, the yeah, the the written paper, the written proof uh, is kind of uh, always epsilon away from from being uh, finished. And uh, um, well, I, I definitely looking at. Uh, I was definitely looking at the previous uh, papers and taking inspiration uh, from them. But uh, um, so I don't know how it felt to you when you were writing this 2013, let's say, paper. But to me, it felt like this is much uh, more uh, complicated than the indicator uh, problem. At, at least as long when you allow infinite values. If you allow finite values, then it's basically just Farkash lemma, and uh, life is good. Uh, but when you've got infinite values, uh, uh, whenever I try to 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 do this properly, it's always uh, just uh, very very annoying and uh, fiddly. No, I agree, and I think this is, as Libor said, this is the right way. This is the nice way. I, I was just asking how it relates to that old construction. I sort of assume it's very similar. It's it's just uh, doing some tricks on top of it. But uh, I guess I'll have to wait for the paper to. Uh, so so well, it. Uh, um, I'm definitely, yeah, it's definitely basically the, the indicator problem. So I'm not, not, there is no new way to do the reduction and some brand new approach. Uh, so, uh, not, uh, well, I'm trying to do it uh, on my own uh, for for good or bad. But uh, but uh, the uh, the idea is, uh, yeah, you could call it the indicator problem. So so uh, I mean, I've got uh, like bonus slides where I try to ex explain it on an example. But uh, I'm not sure if that answers your question. So I would use Farkash lemma for some uh, to get some inequalities like this because alpha and beta are compatible uh, so they are compatible with something that's compatible with relations so Farkash lemma gives me uh, that there are some relations and some tuples uh, that, that uh, witness that so I'll have something like this and then I uh, use that to uh, cook up uh, the uh, a CSP instance so the constants I get from Farkash lemma and the variable names I get from um, these uh, these values here. So it's probably something that that you are familiar with in, in 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 here. And the only thing is, even on this bonus slide, I've got under the rack uh, this uh, thing where I need a constraint that ensures uh, the basically feasibility. So so I, I need to stay within this W pole. Um, plus, so in this uh, support minion, and uh, uh, that's the, the, that's that's the most annoying part. Uh, so uh, 
the, the weighted the the support minion is not the same thing as polymorphisms from A to B, for one thing, which I'm sure Standa knows, but I'm saying this for the general audience. Okay. And thanks, Alex. Thanks a lot. That helps. Thanks. Yeah. So the short answer is yeah. It's 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 it's, it's, it's roughly it's roughly the indicator problem. Yeah. Are there some other questions? I might actually have a question. Uh, so when you uh, when you define these uh, weighted uh, minion homomorphisms, um, you define it as so you have you actually have two minions, right? You have uh, the the abstract minion of the weighted polymorphisms. Uh huh. And then I've got the support minion. Is that and the function minion of which is the support minion? Uh huh. Yes. Uh, so uh, here, so for, for for simplicity, I kind of said that one phi works for everything. So yeah. So my question. So my question is, uh, you define the weighted minion homomorphism as uh, as a minion homomorphism on the support minions that somehow respects the the weights, right? Uh, yes. In the talk, that's 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 what I'm uh, that's what what I'm doing. As I said, in the full version, I can also take like a, a distribution over the over over the uh, the function minion homomorphisms uh, and make this into a weighted minion homomorphism. But I, I think that's just overcomplicating things uh, when explaining. But, it. So my question is, since since the the weighted polymorphisms are actually an abstract minion, how is this different from a minion homo from the abstract minion homomorphism of the two abstract minions? Uh, 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 I'm not sure which abstract minions you, you mean. You mean the uh, instead of the functional homo minion homomorphism, uh, like this first point, uh, I should be taking an abstract minion homomorphism, or uh, no? I'm or are you saying... of, so you take you take uh, so if you consider the 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 abstract minion of weighted polymorphisms, right? Oh, okay. So you weighted polymorphisms elements okay, you... are weighted polymorphisms and you ah, can, see. they are still closed under minors in some way right mm -hmm. whatever taking a minor means oh uh, yeah so, i can define taking a minor of a, of a weighted polymorphism that's 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 not yeah, hard so that means that it is an abstract minion right so i was asking mm -hmm. whether what does it what what oh, is different when you take you would oh you would do it this way polymorphisms of these abstract minions uh but yeah. these weighted minion homomorphisms well if you haven't thought about it like uh, so so well one reason why this is not obviously the same thing is that uh, there might be but i actually don't know if there are but there may be some strange minion homomorphisms that don't respect things like uh, taking uh, taking linear combinations so i suppose you are um, mm -hmm. you, actually this is an interesting question in that maybe if it's like uh, Minion homomorphism that also respects uh, taking uh, like um, conic combinations, so sums and multiplying by non-negative numbers, and then uh, maybe this will actually be enough. Uh, but uh, I, I think just abstract minion homomorphism may result in something strange uh, happening, something yeah, that doesn't respect the the, the weights yeah, I'm very much. I'm definitely not suggesting that it would work. I'm just like asking what what is the difference. So you say there is a difference with something else. And maybe maybe your weighted minion homomorphisms are the abstract minion, minion homomorphisms that have some additional structure, just like respecting what? the cones, as you say. Yeah. So this this is actually that, that's a great question. It gives me an idea. Maybe that I should be defining this as uh, as uh, like uh, minion homomorphism plus uh, plus uh, this the, plus some weights. Uh, and maybe this will actually be uh, be better. Uh, so let me get back to you about uh, that uh, at, at some point. Uh, but I think that if you just do it like abstract minion homomorphism, then there will be probably I don't have it, but I, I expect some counterexample, some something horrible that will uh, not have the form like in this last line. I'm basically telling you uh, the the how to translate one minion homomorphism to another. Uh, but I expected that if you just assume just compatibility with minor taking, that you will have some uh, something that's not of this form at all, something that's that's kind of crazy. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, okay, maybe we have 
time for another question. Last question, if there is one. If there is none, then yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Alex, uh, once more. And thanks for, uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for uh, your attention and have a nice day or evening.